the four frames of reference for establishing mindfulness. There's the body in and of itself, feelings in and of themselves, mind in and of itself, and mental qualities or mental events in and of themselves. And they're not very far apart. In fact, when the Buddha talks about the best way to develop all four of them, he says, focus on the breath. And he doesn't say, when you've had enough of the breath, then you drop the breath and focus on feelings or mind or whatever. You basically stay with the breath all the way through. It's part of the formula, keeping focused on the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That activity of staying focused is the activity of attention. And he says that the attention to the breath counts as a kind of feeling, which it's kind of a strange statement. But apparently what it means is that Every feeling has an element of fabrication, Then, in this case the attention is the fabrication. As you're staying with the breath, you'll notice certain feelings that come up around the breath that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise, just wouldn't have been registered. But as you stay with the breath consistently, it gives rise to feelings of ease. That you can then spread throughout the body. It starts with that act of attention. So in attending to the breath, you've got the feeling right there. And then he says that you can't stay with the breath unless you have good mindfulness and good alertness. Those are states of mind. And then as you're abandoning greed and distress, you have to learn how to watch the greed and distress with equanimity. Those are mental qualities. In other words, any greed and distress that would pull you away from the breath, you have to learn how to look at with equanimity. So it's all there as you're focused on the breath. You don't leave the breath to look at the others. It's just that you take that activity of staying focused on the breath and you learn how to step back a bit and watch it. And at the same time you use it as your post or stake to keep the mind tied in the present moment. The Buddha gives the analogy of six different animals, a crocodile and a monkey and a hyena and a bird. And if you took them, put leashes on each of them and then tied the leashes together in a knot, that would simply be the matter of whichever one was the strongest would pull all the other ones along with it. If the crocodile decided it wanted to go down in the water, everybody would have to go down in the water. You, you know what happened, of course, when monkeys and birds and hyenas get dragged into the water, they drown. But he said, if you take all those leashes and you tie them to a post or a stake, then no matter how much they pull, they're going to have to stay right there next to the stake. And then finally they lie down right next to the stake. This is basically what we're doing as we focus on the breath. We're providing the mind with a stake to keep it in reference to the present moment. Because when you want to start looking at the mind or feelings, it's so easy to get pulled away if you don't have that kind of stake. You're angry about this, you're upset about that, you're fearful about this, and then you go off into that thought world. So what we're doing is trying to create the breath as a steady place to stay and create our attention to the breath. The breath is always coming in and out, but make sure that our attention is steady as well. Because when you're with the breath, you know you're with the present moment, and then you try to create a space, the breath filling the whole body. And the sense of ease that comes with your attention to the breath filling the whole body. Now it allows the mind to settle down so that whatever thoughts do come up, you can watch them simply as things bubbling up and then dis disappearing. Because you're not taking them for real. You're not getting involved in them. 
that we can focus more and more on where those thoughts are coming from. Because the thoughts are like a magician. The magician does all these things to distract you so you don't see what he's actually doing. Sometimes he's doing his things right in front of your eyes, but you don't see them because he's got some other little trick. to pull your attention away from what's actually happening. This is what the mind does. It gives you something really interesting. Even though it's not all that interesting, it's, there's something about our thoughts. No matter how dull they are or whatever, we always seem to be fascinated by them. And what is there? Not all that much, but somehow the fact that it comes out of us the analogy they give sometime in Thailand is like your own farts. Other people's farts are horrible, oppressive, but yours are not so bad. <laughs> so what we're doing as we meditate is to get something that's more interesting. <laughs> So when a thought comes in, you begin to see, well, that's really nothing much, just something bubbling up and going away. You start looking at what the process is that creates the thought. And that's a lot more interesting, how the mind creates these little worlds. This is a really interesting process. But first you've got to get the mind settled down. One of our problems as meditators is that we're often too much in too much of a hurry. We want to move on to the insights that are supposed to liberate us, and we don't want to get the groundwork really solid. And then as a result, what happens? Some thought comes along and just pulls us away. Or we see one thought, and we manage to not get pulled away by that, and we get so proud of not being pulled away that that pride pulls us away. So whatever comes up, you've got to stay right here, right here. So try to get really interested in the breath. It's your protection. It's your anchor in the present moment. Then it's protection against not only the energies coming out of your mind, but also the energies you might have otherwise picked up from other people. It enables you to go through the day. You've got your body filled with your breath energy, so there's no room for other people's energies to intrude. And you improve the circulation to the different organs in the body. There are lots of benefits that come from staying with the breath and learning to work with it and getting interested in it. Looking at this process of fabrication in the body, so that when you're staying in the present moment, it's not with the feeling of being tied down. You realize there's something interesting going on here. You want to look at your intentions. You want to look at all the other elements that go up to make up the present moment. And the first way to see your intentions is to set an intention to stay with the breath and do your best to maintain it. And that's when you find out how there are all these other intentions that come in, other members of the committee who seem to be with the program, but they were just biding their time. And then we see that they've got their chance, they move in. And if you hadn't had a firmly placed intention to begin with, you wouldn't have noticed it. Your trains of thought head off in all sorts of directions, and you're hopping from one train to another. First it looks like you're going to do, go to New York, and then you hop to another train that's going down to Miami, and then there's another train that's going to go to Abilene, Texas, and it just goes all over the place. Those animals that are pulling in different directions. So try to get interested in the breath. Remind yourself of all the good reasons for trying to work with the breath energy. And get really, really solid here. That way, when you do decide that you want to look at the feeling side of this process or the mind side of this process, it's not going to pull you away. 
In fact, staying with the breath, you're going to have to deal with feelings. You're going to have to deal with mind states. If you find that you're having trouble settling down, okay, you've got to deal with that mind state for the purpose of getting back to the breath. Or the feelings of dis-ease in the body or dis-ease in the mind. You've got to work with the breath to make it easier for the mind to settle down, give yourself a better place to settle down. But in all these cases, your best way of dealing with problems in terms of feelings, your problems in terms of the mind, or your problems in terms of distraction is, what's the breath like? John Fung used to say this is the, the key to our skill here. Whatever problem comes up, your first question should be, how does this relate to the breath? The feelings, the mind states, the distractions keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath. Try to learn as much as you can about the various ways of breathing and the impact that they have in different parts of the body, in different conditions of the mind. Make this the center of your skill. And all the other elements, all the other frames of reference will come gathering around. And anything you need to know, you'll know right here.